Shaw TV Channel 9 is proud to present mobile coverage of the 2009 Milk Provincial 4A High School Basketball Championship Finals. Presented by Red River Co-op, the dairy farmers of Manitoba. Never stop. Milk. And the Manitoba High School's Athletic Association. High School Athletics, the other half of education. Live from the Investors Group Athletic Center at the University of Manitoba. Welcome back, folks. More deja vu for you from last year. This was the scene at the University of Winnipeg's Duckworth Center as the Oak Park Raiders fell at the hands of the Garden City Fighting Gophers. And tonight, they're back to try for a repeat against the six-seeded Sturgeon Heights Huskies. Welcome back live to the Investors Group Athletic Center at the University of Manitoba. Shaw TV Sports is proud to bring you live coverage of the 2009 4A Milk High School Basketball Championships. And there you see the masses are awaiting the hotly anticipated gold medal, the championship final in the boys. I'm Chuck Clement at courtside. I'm with the coach, Lori May, and with Missy Penner. And guys, uh, the girls' final really paved the way for a terrific uh, boys' final. It pits the number one seed, the Garden City Fighting Gophers, against the number six seeds, the Sturgeon Heights Huskies. Coach May, what do we know about Sturgeon Heights? Sturgeon Heights doesn't know the meaning of the word quit. The people that were here last night saw them chip away and come up with a victory. It's just great. You're going to look at, as far as individuals, you look at number three, Tyler Pierce, the point guard for the Huskies does a great job, sees the floor, very athletic. Uh, in terms of uh, other ones to look at, we look at number 24, Devin Schmidt. The big man, athletic, and hit the outside jumper. Missy, on the other side of the court, the Garden City Fighting Gophers, they've been here before, they're looking to repeat. What do we expect from them tonight? Well, I think they're going to have to maintain their composure. I mean, it's going to come down to the team that really shows up ready to play. I think it's going to be a very physical game, and you've got to stay focused and be very, very disciplined. Who are we looking for to step up tonight for the Fighting Gophers? Well, number 27, Braden Duff. I mean, he's probably one of the top rebounders to come through the province in many, many years. I mean, he's just solid under the boards. He's got some sweet moves under the basket, and he can also shoot from the outside. Anybody else? Uh, there's, and let's stress, this is the defending championship team. A lot of key players. Talk to us about another one. Another player would be number 32, uh, also the number one player in the province, Jared Uncle Baby Jackson. He's the Ford general. Uh, just like Danielle Degani is for Crocus, he can do it all. I mean, you don't want to leave him open. He's got great handles on the ball. He'll spread things out. Very, very smart player. We should stress one previous meeting between these two teams earlier this year was way back in December. Garden City won that one, but that was such a long time ago. Such a long season has passed since then. It's going to get loud. It's going to get crazy. Absolutely. <laughs> Who knows what can happen. Stay right where you are. Don't go anywhere. The tip-off in the Boys 4A Provincial Final for 2009 comes your way next right here on Shot TV Sports. TV Channel 9 is proud to present mobile coverage of the 2009 Milk Provincial 4A High School Basketball Championship Final. Presented by Red River Co-op, the dairy farmers of Manitoba. Never stop. Milk. And the Manitoba High School's Athletic Association. High School Athletics, the other half of education. A little something can mean everything to kids without the means to enjoy organized sports. Because kids involved with sport are more active, healthier, and happier, which benefits everyone. Right now, children in your community need financial support to play the sports they love. To donate, visit Kids Sport so all kids can play. This program is brought to you in part by Keystone Air Service Limited, providing air chartered services anywhere in North America.
like to welcome everyone back. We're going to throw directly to the public address announcer, Darren Bombing, where they're having a moment of silence for Nick Lipin. Currently coaching St. Paul's Crusaders and daughter Susie, the former executive director of the Winnipeg Minor Basketball Association. Jeff is also a member of Manitoba's Canada Games coaching staff and president of the Coaches Association. The Manitoba High School Athletic Association will be creating an award in the memory of Nick to be called the Nick LePing Leadership Award. Our thoughts and prayers are with Bev and the entire LePing family. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and let us have a moment of silence in memory of our good friend, Nick LePing. Thank you. We would now ask everyone to turn and face the flag on the south wall for the singing of O Canada by Jessica Coss-Witcher of Sturgeon Heights Collegiate. And the Huskies are right beside us with the entire band in attendance, I'm sure. It's going to get, as I said, loud and crazy in here. Get a look at some of the fans. It is packed in here, everyone. So you can throw the rankings out the door. I know Sturgeon oh. Heights is number six, but they've been pretty much number, or sorry, in the top four all season. Uh, the, the ranking changed very late in the season. These two teams have only met once, Garden City won, but Sturgeon Heights was also without Devin Schmidt, who would be a huge loss to them at that time. He's, uh, once, as we said before, he's a very big guy. He's athletic, hits the boards, and has a nice sweet jumper from the outside. Let's throw it to public address announcer Darren Bombing for the introduction of our starting players. Up forward, standing six foot four, number 16, Marko Milosevic. A six foot guard, number 24, Roberto Campanella Jr. A six foot four forward, number 27, Braden Duff.
and a five foot ten guard, number thirty two, Jared Ogumbemi Jackson. Tonight's visiting team are the Sturgeon Heights Huskies. They advanced to the finals by defeating the Mennonite Brethren Hawks and the number three seeded Grant Park Pirates. Last night they defeated the number two seeded St. Paul's Crusaders in a 75-74 barn burner. Now let's meet the Husky team members. Number 12, Alex Hebert. Number 13, Connor Johnson. Number 15, Dumpal Brar. Number 21, Tanner Lambert. Number 22, Dylan Forsberg. Number 25, Shaquille Armstrong. Coaches are Kirby Shep and Ian Hayes. Manager is Nathan Jensen. And now, the starting lineup for the Sturgeon Heights Huskies. A five foot ten guard, number three, Tyler Pierce. A five foot nine guard, number five, Anthony Coombs. At guard, standing five foot eleven. Number 10, Keenan LaFrance. A six foot six forward, number 23, Wyatt Anders. And a forward, standing six foot six, number 24, Devin Schmidt. The officials for tonight's game are Cam Moskal, Ozzy Philippin, and Steve Cosbit. Well, there we have the introduction of both teams. The boys are ready to take the court here in the championship game. Sturgeon Heights starting off with the ball. That's Tyler Pierce. Schmidt to LaFrance. LaFrance, one of the top running backs. And an outside shot taken by number five. That's Anthony Coombs, but coming down with it are the Gophers. Jared Ogle, baby Jackson to start things off for the Fighting Gophers. Gets it to Marco. Milosevic to Duff. That ball almost thrown away, thrown off. Good job the, by Braden. Yep, Sturgeon Heights player and out of bounds. That ball goes off of Anders. Inbounds to Garden City, eight seconds on the clock. Ogabemi Jackson gets it to Mike Denisiak. Denisiak looking to drive, he gets blocked. Good job by Tyler. Tyler Pierce with the ball, very quick guard for Sturgeon Heights. Gets it inside to Anders. Good recovery Schmidt with by the Jackson. Outside shot. That's a guy you don't want to leave open. Other baby Jackson comes up with this steal. Looking to drive, and it goes in and out. Doesn't drop in for the Gophers. Pierce coming down with it. The Franz. The Franz is fouled by Duff. I think this foul might go against Roberto Campanella Jr. Whoa. That puts LaFrance to the line shooting two. First opportunity to score some baskets. He's short on the first one. Just like you said with the girls' final, Missy, a little bit of nerves at the beginning. And the Huskies are on the board first. one nothing. good on the second attempt. 
Has a Benny Jackson bringing the ball up to the Gophers. We talked in the opening how this could be a very physical game. You know Sturgeon plays very hard, scrappy at times. Roberto Campanelli Jr. with the shot off the board. Marco Milosevic comes down with it and drops it in for two. Good job by Marco. LaFrance takes a look, moves things around. Coons back to LaFrance. LaFrance with the outside shot. Off the board, Schmidt coming down with the board. He goes up, doesn't drop in, and Duff with the big board for the Gophers. Good job by Braden. Roberto Campanella Jr. with the outside shot off the rim and out of bounds. Both teams can play with a 10 second shot clock right now. <laughs> Tyler Pierce, number three for Sturgeon Heights. Then Sturgeon Heights, the amalgamation of Sturgeon Creek and Silver Heights. Travel, Travel ball. ball being called against Pierce. Sturgeon Heights uh, has never won a provincial championship, that either a Sturgeon Creek or a Silver Heights. And of course, Garden City won their first one last year, so they're defending champions. Agamemnon Jackson, Milosevic, Denisia. Milosevic with the outside shot. It was blocked. Partially blocked. No call on the block, though. LaFrance. Coons looking to drive. LaFrance now going to the board. Let me get and a foul here. On the, foul. the foul going against Roberto. That's his second foul. Here's the bump. So Roberto called on his second foul. He'll be replaced by Brendan Corrigan. LeBron's good on two. Brendan Corrigan is now into the game for Garden City. Here comes some pressure from Susan Heights. Welcome, Bebby Jackson. Gets it to the aesthetic. Denisiak with the outside shot. Drains the three. Five threes to score in favor of the Gophers. Pierce now with the ball for Sturgeon Heights. Tyler Pierce looking to drive. He goes up and puts in two. Good job by Tyler as he sees the entire floor. Takes it right at Garden City. Corrigan goes up for two. Nice passing by Garden City. Good movement of the ball. Pierce. LeBron takes the shot, doesn't drop in. Milosevic comes down with the big board. Denisiak now looking to drive. Tries to get it inside to Corrigan. LeBron almost steals it, but Corrigan comes back with it. Ogunbebe Jackson looking to set things up. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Here's a shot. Milosevic off the rim and out. Braun goes up, doesn't drop in for him. Good job, by, good push by Serge Heights. Fade away shot by Elder Maybe Jackson, doesn't drop in. Schmidt coming down with the big board for Serge and Heights. Nice steal there, almost by Marco Milosevic. Tyler wants that one back. Cross court means danger. LaFrance with the ball, he gets it to Coons, Coons looking to drive, and we got a foul, a blocking foul called against He's Brendan cool. Corrigan. We'll get a chance to see this last drive by Coons. That's the knee. 7-5, still the score in favor of the Gophers. Devin Schmidt all alone under the basket. Good out of bounds play by Sturgeon. We're all tied up. 
Huckabee Jackson gets it into Duff. That ball's knocked away by LaFrance. Good steal by LaFrance. Coombs. Coombs looking to drive. Gets it to LaFrance. LaFrance with the outside shot. Huckabee Jackson coming down with the big board for the Gophers. Slowing things up. And he drains two. He likes the top of that key. Pierce with the ball. Very quick guard again. Sturgeon Heights, an extremely athletic team. Devin Schmidt, also one of the top volleyball players in the province. Pierce with the outside shot. And he's good for three. 10-9, Sturgeon Heights with the lead. gets it into Marco and Marco goes up he's fouled on the play this foul going against Wyatt Anders that'll put Marco to the line shooting two get a good look at Marco there on your screen squad player on last year's team has really improved nice shooting stroke we're tied at 10 apiece. Marco on his second attempt. One of the purest shooters in the game. Good on the second one. 11 10. Garden City in the lead. Tyler Pierce. The Sturgeon Heights. LaFrance. Good movement by Sturgeon Heights. That ball goes up. Oh, big board by Duff. Almost got undercut. Denisiak with the three point attempt. Here's a lucky bounce. Good bounce, but at the same time, one thing that certain Heights can't do, they can't get into a running game with Garden City, or it's over. Pierce looking to drive. And he drops it in. Good job by Pierce. This one back and forth. Like Maybe Jackson to Denisiak. Denisiak left wide open. Oh, in and out. Coming down with that is LeFrance. Pierce bringing the ball up now for Sturgeon Heights. Oh, a big board and a block there by Duff. Oh, the baby Jackson for Garden City. And he goes up with a sweet move. Uh, Number one player move. in the province. 16-12 in favor of the Gophers. Pierce right now gets it inside to Anders. Nice steal by Corrigan. He's fouled on the play by LeBron. Last bucket. A good, good, hard drive by Jackson. He had uh, Shaquille Armstrong into the game right now for the Huskies. Go for a sin, bound the ball. Connor Johnson in for the last as well. Hugger Bebby Jackson with the ball, 16 12, 251 left in the first opening quarter, an outside shot. Hugger Bebby Jackson drains Run the down, three. down. <laughs> Give him four for that. <laughs> if only they could, Lori. <laughs> Connor Johnson also into the game. That ball almost stole by the Huskies. Goes out of bounds off the Gophers. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Two and a half minutes left in the opening quarter of this boys championship game. Number one, Garden City. Number six, Sturgeon Heights. Tyler Pierce with the ball. We get an outside shot off the rim. Schmidt coming down with it. He throws it right into Agamemi Jackson's hands. Denise gets it to Agamemi Jackson. Duff, Duff looking to drive. Corrigan, outside shot, off the rim, and out. Pierce coming down with the big board for Sturgeon Heights. Coons. We had an outside shot by Johnson. Algamemi Jackson taking the ball up the court, and he's tripped. 
Controls the ball. Denisiak looking to drive. And this ball going out of bounds off Duff. Good job here by Susan Heights trying to mix it up and defensively. And they're going to have to do that to try and keep the goalers off balance. Pierce with the outside shot off the rim, but Schmidt right there. Schmidt with a nice turnaround spin move. Nice rebound off the offensive glass by Devin Schmidt. Duff with the ball. Nice move by Marco to hold on to that one, and he drains it from the top of the key. 21-14 is our score. One of the pure shooters in high school basketball. Pierce looking to drive. Gets it inside. Nice shot there by 25 to kill Armstrong. But he misses that one. Schmidt going to the line. Foul called against gonna... Brendan Corrigan. Good job. That's Devin Schmidt crashing the offensive glass. Devin Schmidt, good on the first one. Another multi-sport athlete, one of the top volleyball players in the province. Oh, and the ball bounces out. Duff coming down with the board. Marco Milosevic bring the ball down for the Gophers. Agamemi Jackson. Fade away, goes off the board. Duff passes the ball to Agamemi Jackson and he goes up for two. Johnson gets it to Pierce. Schmidt with the outside shot again. Don't leave him open. He is dangerous. Twenty-three, eighteen, seventeen seconds. Garden City looking to take the last shot, run the clock down. Five-point lead in favor of the Gophers. First quarter coming to an end here. Milosevic with the outside shot, and he's good for three. Good job by the Gophers. Jackson holding the ball up. Puts it down in the corner to one of the best pure shooters, as we said, in the high school game today. Easy three for the Gophers. 26-18 is the score at the end of the first quarter. A very well-played quarter by both teams here. A lot of points were put up just after each of uh, the teams missed their initial foray into the offensive zone. They really started to play on the post. Okay. Let's see if Let's we can listen in to Sturgeon Heights. Derek can make a play dishing the ball. Right now he's just getting too easy. But when we do, we have to get in the second rotation. Do you know what I mean? So if our post got to come up, these guys got to come over just like that. If we can't, hopefully it's not off Marco, it's off one of the other guys. But we draw a clog so our post can help. You understand? Remember, you want to be close enough to touch the ball on him, right? To bother him, bother him, bother him. Then it'll be all drive, and then we can help. All right? Go for a strip, too. When he goes, he's bringing it right in front of you. Offensively, we got to use that first screen. Use that first screen to get some movement and get a complete reversal if we can, right? And then attack them. Just be a little more patient, but keep going to the rim. That's good. We need to get to the rim more. You understand? We're getting the rim more. We're more patient on, on all right. And let's get better help on penetration. Yeah, let's go. Let's go, boys. Let's go. At Shaw TV, we're all about community sports, and we value your comments. Call the Shaw TV viewer response line now at 480-3500 and tell us how we're doing. You can also email us at shawtvwinnipeg at shaw.ca. As we were saying, a good job by Coach Shep. He knows they're still in a ball game. They're only down eight. Absolutely. It's only the first quarter. Lots of games to play. As we saw in the girls' final, uh, we saw Massey take that one by two, but Crocus doing everything possible to come back in the fourth quarter. 26-18 is our score in favor of the Gophers. Just the start of the second quarter here. Corrigan gets the ball to Ogabebe Jackson. Ogabebe Jackson looking to drive. He goes up, doesn't drop in. Corrigan comes down with the board for the Gophers. New shot clock. Milosevic looking to clear things out. Defense! 
Eight seconds. Duff looking to drive. Duff goes up, doesn't drop in for him. Schmidt coming down with the big board for Sturgeon Height. Huskies lucky that time. You can't give Garden City second and third opportunities. That was Coombs with the outside shot. Good for three. Jackson calling out a play. Algamendi Jackson with the outside shot. Drains it for two. 28-21. Pierce. Too easy for Garden City. Got to stay in front of him. Tyler Pierce, one-on-one -on -one with Algamendi Jackson. Big. Looked like a block there by Algamendi Jackson. Let's see if we can take a look at that replay. Looked like he got all ball on that one. Got him with the body, unfortunately. Yes, I think he might have. Good call by referee Cusbitt. Good job by Stringen Heights if they just keep, keep going to the hole. As Coach Shep mentioned after the first quarter, they've got to keep going to the hole. Tyler Pierce good on the first one, 28-22. And he's good on the second one. Back to a five-point lead. Agamemi Jackson. Number one player, Duff, number five, Marco Milosevic from the top of the key, and he drains it. Pierce bringing the ball up for Sturgeon Heights. Coombs, one-on-one. -on -one. They get the ball into John Johnson, sorry. Johnson with the outside shot, tipped by Duff. Ogamemi Jackson couldn't control that ball, goes out of bounds off him. Sturgeon Heights inbound the ball. Into the game is Brar. Brar, you don't want to leave him open either. He's very dangerous, especially from the outside. Coombs with the outside shot. Duff coming down with the big board for the Gophers. Agamemi Jackson brings the ball up the court. Great Duff doing good job on the glass for the Gophers. And that ball doesn't drop in, but Corrigan, huge board for the Gophers. Turn around, puts it in. 32-23, Pierce. Bringing the ball up. Coombs, one-on-one -on -one with Denisia. Brar to Pierce. Loses the ball. See if we can take a look at this replay. We received a nice board by Brendan Corrigan. Brendan Corrigan, one of the players at Garden City, and his dad is the principal of Sturgeon Heights. <laughs> We've got a timeout being called on the floor. Let's see if we can listen in to the Garden City timeout. Duff side, so Duff is here. Marco is here. Jared, take it this way, right? So we cut through. Marco comes up, swing it over. Duff, get in the block. You can post that guy, but you got to get in there. Okay, you're just settling for standing outside. You're not getting aggressive. Marco, okay, here, inside to Duff. If they double, then look for the offside guy, Brendan. They might help off you. You understand? Okay. Defensively, we're doing a good job. Remember that kid's a shooter. All right? Yeah. Hey, good job. Let's go. Coach Penner letting the rest of the Garden City Gophers know that we're in good shape. Just keep that ball moving and we'll be okay. Defensively, they're doing a good job on the glass. Well, we know that Sturgeon Heights has been playing extremely hot lately, knocking off a few teams, including St. Paul's last night. They're definitely in this one and have the capability of coming back as we did see last night. Pierce inbound the ball. Football being called against Algebebe Jackson. Coombs to Brar. Brar looking to drive, dishes it off to Coombs with the outside shot, and he nails the three. Both teams doing a great job shooting tonight. Moving the ball well, hitting the open person. 
Duff going inside. Nice move to go around a couple of players there. That's just danger for Sturgeon Creek. If Gardens if he gets the ball on that low, Duff is not going to miss from there. No, and he was triple team there. Drawer with the ball. Coombs. Good defense by Denisiak. Dirksen. Sorry, Devin Schmidt with the ball. Agamemby Jackson coming down with it. 34-26 is our score. Jared looking to drive. Count the basket. Three-point attempt here. This foul, I believe, called against Coombs. We'll see if we can take a look here. Yeah, we can see the body from behind. There's the touch right there. Count the basket. Baby Jackson going to the line. 36-26, one of the larger leads. Ten points right now. Brar coming out. Back into the game is number 23, Wyatt Anders. One of the big players for Sturgeon Heights. Here we get a look at the number one player in the province last year and this year. Agamemi Jackson, good on his foul shot. Very important for Sturgeon Heights to come down here and move the ball. Try and hit the old player. LeBron going up strong but doesn't convert. Great rebound by LeBron, though. Agamemi Jackson with the spin move, dishes it off to Duff. Duff goes up strong, doesn't drop it in. A lot of action and players underneath that hoop. Not much of an opening on either side. Braden doesn't usually miss from that close end. LeBron driving and puts nice it hoop. in. Thirty-seven, twenty-eight. Six minutes left in the second quarter here. The first half of the boys' championship game. Garden City, Sturgeon Heights. That ball stolen away by Pierce. Good defense by Sturgeon Heights. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Get the ball into Duff. Duff with a couple spin moves, puts it out to Denisiak. Denisiak drains the three. 40-28, 12 point lead. There wasn't too much difference that uh, Sergeant Heights could do. They put three on Jackson, figuring that he was going to get the ball. Oh, and Coombs left wide open, but it goes off the rim and out. Corrigan coming down with the board. I'll commit me Jackson. I'll commit me Jackson looking to drive. Jumps and puts in two. Time for a timeout. Pierce with the ball. Gets it in to Anders. Anders back to Pierce. Pierce looking to drive. Oh, spin move and a travel. Looked like he lost his balance and almost spun on the floor there. A little bit of a wipeout, no contact. If we're Sturgeon Heights, we don't want to lose contact with Garden City. Agamemi Jackson. Gets it into Duff. Duff goes up and puts it in. Showing a lot of patience on his shot. I noticed that even last night in the semifinal. Waiting for the Looking defense. Looking for a foul. There's a nice if they don't score here, they got to call a timeout. And Schmidt with the outside shot almost went in. Duff with the big board for the Gophers. 44-28, 4.35 left in the second quarter. Ogabebe Jackson looking to drive. Gets it off to Milosevic. Milosevic looking to drive. He goes up and, he's fouled. and is fouled on the play. That'll put him to the line. We're going to lose touch with the Gophers. It's going to be a 20-point lead if we don't watch it. Tyler Pierce called on the foul. We've got a timeout being called, I believe by Sturgeon Heights. We'll see if we can listen in to the Sturgeon Heights timeout and coach Kirby Shep. You've got Jared, okay? You understand? Okay? Why? You have a way more aggressive rebounding the ball. you got to pass the glass and put pressure on top, right? Okay. Guys are beating us right-handed, especially Marco, right? He's only going right. Take it away. We've got to start to be more aggressive. We're way too passive in the early going. Attack, pitch, swing it, attack a game. We need to put more pressure on their defense. You understand? Let's get more aggressive that way. There's 
still killing us in the glass. No one beats us going right. You understand? No one beats us going right. So let's make Jared pitch it. All right? You got him now. Everybody else match up. Let's go now. Let's go. Three, two, one. Wants to see some aggressiveness, not only the offensive end, but the defensive end. And also wanting to force the players going right. That's because most players being right-handed have a harder time going to their non-dominant hand. So it's good tactic and strategy by Kirby Shep. Where you get a look at some of the Husky fans in the crowd here. A packed house at the line right now is Marco Milosevic for the Gophers. 46-28 start score. 427 left in the second quarter here. And he's good for the three-point play. Pierce with the ball for the Huskies. Gets it into Coombs. Coombs dishes it off to Pierce. Pierce a little bit short, but coming down with it is Schmidt. Schmidt goes up. The ball's blocked by Duff. Lefron looking to drive. That ball goes up, off Duff again, and the ball goes off Sturgeon Heights and out of bounds. Some good defense by Duff. Good job by Brayden. And we get a look at Duff getting a piece of that one, and then also this one here. Duff makes Sturgeon Heights all of the shots two or three times down there. Fade away by Duff, goes off the rim, doesn't convert. Coming down with it is Anders Pierce now bringing the ball up for Sturgeon Heights. Nice move by Pierce, off the backboard and in. Great shot by Tyler Pierce, showing his athleticism. Agamemnon Jackson gets it into Duff, and we've got another foul being called. I believe this one might go against Tyler Pierce. Pierce. That'll be two quick fouls against Pierce. Charge to Sturgeon Lights, Tyler Pierce, his second. Duff to inbound the ball for the Fighting Gophers. Gets it into Milosevic. He goes up, misses the basket. Coons bringing the ball up for the Huskies. Schmidt to LaFrance. Coons looking to drive. And Mike Denisiak getting called on the foul. That'll put Anthony Coons to the line. And there we get a look at Denisia coming from across the body, making contact with the hand. Coombs good on the first. Just over three minutes left in this first half. This is what uh, Sturgeon Knight needs. They've got to score with that clock stop. Corrigan coming down with the big hoop for the Gophers. Hugamemi Jackson with the ball. Nice crossover move. Does it drop in? No, it doesn't. 47-31. Just under three minutes in the second quarter here. Schmidt. LaFrance with the outside shot off the board. Coming down with it is Anders. Big board for the Huskies. Pierce looking to set things up for the Huskies. Gets it to Schmidt. Coombs. On Duff with a big block. That's probably his fifth block already. Gets it to Marco. Marco looking to drive. And he lays it in and is fouled. This foul being called, I believe, against Coons. See if we can take a look at this last play. Duff dishing the ball off to Milosevic. Milosevic driving and Coons not quite established. Establishing position there. That's Marco going to. That's Marco going to his right again. And Marco good on his foul shot. 50-31. What Coach Chef said back in the timeout, we've got to take their right hand away. Pierce with the ball. Almost stolen by Agabebe Jackson. Good defense by the Gophers. Schmidt looking to drive. Pierce. One second left. The foul, oh sorry, the shot not taken off. Coombs doesn't on get time. it away fast enough. Shot clock violation. Two minutes left in the opening half, the second quarter here of the boys' championship final. Garden City in yellow, Sturgeon Heights in 
black. Oh, the baby Jackson with the ball. Garden City got to put it inside. Just go to the line here. They tried. Almost stolen by LaFrance. Good defense again by the Huskies. Sevek to inbound the ball to Jackson. Eight seconds Ball's left. Duff. Get it inside to Duff. Nice move by Duff. Nice spin move. Oh! A fadeaway almost hook shot. I don't know what you'd call that one. Braden will take it. Oh, a nice pass there by Pierce, but LaFrance couldn't hold on to it. See if we can take a look at Braden's move here. Spin. Off balance and in. 52 31 is our score. 125 left. Agamemi Jackson dishes it off to Marco. Marco for three. 55 31. 14 point, sorry, 24 point lead. I almost failed math there. Pierce with the ball. Get, oh, nice steal there by Denise Almost stolen there by Coombs. Denisiak decides to slow things down, gets it to Duff. Duff looking to drive. That's a charge right And Duff. we've got a charge being called against Duff. We'll take a look. That's his first. That was pretty close. Could have been called either way, that one. Into the game right now is Mark Garcia, brought up from the junior varsity team. They get it inside to Anders. Stolen by Agabemi Jackson. Marco Milosevic almost getting in the way there. Agabemi Jackson, contact from Pierce, no foul, but he converts. 34 seconds left in the second quarter here. 57-31 is our score. goes up. Coming down with it is Mark Garcia. Gets the talk of maybe Jackson. 17 seconds. Garden City looking to take the last shot. 10 seconds. There we saw maybe Jackson get a couple of attempts there, put one up quickly, but it doesn't drop in. Our score at the half is 57-31 in favor of the number one ranked team, Garden City Fighting Gophers. So it started off as a fairly close game, Garden City having a strong second quarter. Good job by Garden City in terms of moving the ball. They just have too many weapons in their arsenal for the Huskies. I don't think they can stop them all. These Huskies are trying to plug all the holes. They just simply can't. And uh, Sturgeon Heights, I mean, we've seen it time and time again. We saw it last night. They were in a similar situation, but they slowly chipped away and plugged away and came back to pull off that upset against St. Paul. So don't count them out. There's still a lot of game to play. We've got a full half to play in the boys' championship game. Right now, our score, 57-31 in favor of the Gophers. It is halftime here. Right now, we're going to go courtside where Chuck is waiting for an interview with Coach Phil Penner. How are you? Thank you, Missy. Phil? Uh, Coach Phil, I should say, 57-31. You're happy with the team's performance? Yeah, we've uh, played real well so far. Uh, you know, defensively, I think a good, we've done a decent job. We're giving up a few too many offensive rebounds. But, uh, you know, right, offensively right now, we're shooting the ball really well. You've been here. You've done that, as they say, with the, being defending champs. What are you going to tell your guys here in the locker room at halftime? Uh, you know what? Last year doesn't mean anything. Right now, I'm basically going to be... This half doesn't mean anything. Basically, we just got to come on and play like it's a 0-0 game and uh, come on play the same intensity that we did the first half. Good luck, Coach. Thanks for joining Thanks us. Thanks very much, Chuck. All right, Kirby Shep, the coach from Sturgeon Heights is with us. Coach, 57-31 after the first half. Uh, your thoughts on the first half? Uh, I think you just summed it up, 57-31. We're having trouble keeping uh, Jared out of the lane uh, with his scoring, but not only his scoring, but we're forced to help, which takes us out of rebounding position, which that provides stuff for some of the other guys, uh, shooters, offensive rebounds, that kind of stuff. But it all starts with Jared forcing us to help, right? We have to find a way to contain him, I guess. It certainly looked from the sidelines that it wasn't the case of you guys playing bad. They just might be playing a little bit better. So what are you going to tell the guys at halftime here? Uh, well, we'll have to figure out something different. Uh, 
change up our defense maybe, uh, we'll figure it out. For last game of the year, we're not going to uh, stay with the bat on our shoulder. The Huskies will be coming out all guns blazing. Thank you very Thank much, you. Coach. Coach Kirby Shep from the Sturgeon Heights Huskies. The score is 57-31 in favor of Garden City. They're going for their second consecutive provincial crown, and we'll be back here with more interviews and uh, more of our halftime show here from the University of Manitoba. At Shaw TV, we're all about community sports, and we value your comments. Call the Shaw TV viewer response line now at 480-3500 and tell us how we're doing. You can also email us at shawtvwinnipeg at shaw.ca. Shaw TV Channel 9 is proud to present mobile coverage of the 2009 Milk Provincial 4A High School Basketball Championship Finals. Presented by Red River Co-op, the dairy farmers of Manitoba. Never stop. Milk. And the Manitoba High School's Athletic Association. High School Athletics, the other half of education. Welcome back to the University of Manitoba. It's halftime in the boys' 4A provincial final. Garden City leads Sturgeon Heights. I'm joined now at courtside by Kerry Lesouk, who's the assistant executive director of the Manitoba High School's Athletic Association. Kerry, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. You know, this place is full tonight. If we get any more packed, you guys are going to have to find a bigger venue. This is really impressive. Yeah, we're going to have to start looking to see if MTS Center is open for these weekends. So we're kidding about this, but it really is unbelievable. The crowd is in it. They're loud. They're boisterous. And it can't be anything better, you can imagine, for Absolutely. the man. MHSAA. Absolutely. We were talking with some other people earlier, too, like for the referees, the players, these coaches, anybody in Manitoba sport, this might be the biggest venue to play. Like, and we've, There's been national championships here, and those are always fantastic events, too, but nothing seems to beat a high school atmosphere because this is when the place really does get full. Well, and with Shaw TV Sports, we've been here many a times for international sports competitions, and you'd be hard-pressed to find too many nights or events where it was this packed, so hats off to the MHSAA and to the basketball community for getting behind us. Yeah, absolutely. We're so proud of our schools that they can come and celebrate with us these kinds of events. We talked with Morris at halftime during the girls' final, to, speaking of what's happening here versus what's happening around the province. We joked that you clocked 1,400 kilometers in the last two days. You've uh, seen a lot of other tournaments take place. Uh, tell us what you saw and where you went. Well, we, I've, I've mentioned this many times in the past. We have March Madness right here in Manitoba. We have 12 different categories of basketball between girls and boys, JV and varsity. And uh, yeah, yesterday I was in Russell and Robin for the double A's, and today I was in Sprague and Vita for the single A's. And it's a, yeah, it's a little bit of traveling, but uh, I think I mentioned other people too. But you know, it, it's for me it's a treat because you get to see all the hard work that all these people put into it. You get to see all the teams from all over the Manitoba at their respective levels of play compete for their coveted title. So it's an absolute treat. It really doesn't happen without all of these conveners and coaches and volunteers and all of these various places. That's off to those people as well. Well, yeah, when we look, we run 11 different sports across the province in the school year, and we probably have over 2,000 volunteers when that school year is said and done. And in basketball, we're looking at all kinds of schools, and, and there's referees traveling all over the place. There's uh, board members. There's, but we figured that, our, and I didn't calculate exactly, but we probably looked at 175 records to qualify for provincial championships. You as a wild card or as his own champion. The other half of education, as you call it. The, the, the high school sports scene is the other half of education. What does the MHSAA really mean by that? You know, one of the things I believe that, you know, at the end of the season, a lot of people look at a team's record and they look at their wins or their losses, and they consider that as their success. Well, the success, as far as I'm concerned, is the values that they've learned through that basketball season or high school sports season, whatever the sport may be. But the values of such learning how to work with others, how to work hard, how to strive for a common goal, uh, respecting your opponent, respecting the game, respecting the referee's decisions, your coach's decisions, respecting your teammates, and respecting yourself. 
those are just to name a few, but as far as I'm concerned, there's things such as integrity, commitment, dedication, motivation. Those are all life skills that are, as far as I'm concerned, more important than the wins and losses when it's all said and done. And they're all being exemplified here tonight and all over the province. So yeah. thank you so much. My pleasure. It's great to be here. Kerry Lasuk, the Executive Director, Assistant Executive Director of the MHSAA. We're back here with more at halftime in the, in the Boys 4A Championship Final from the University of Manitoba. TV Channel 9 is proud to present mobile coverage of the 2009 Milk Provincial 4A High School Basketball Championship Final. Presented by Red River Co-op, the dairy farmers of Manitoba. Never stop. Milk. And the Manitoba High School's Athletic Association. High School Athletics, the other half of education. Have you got an opinion on your favorite team? So do these guys. Have you had better days? Not too many. Every Wednesday, celebrities and sports stars give you the inside story. I love it. I, like, I'm super into curling. From around the world and right here at home, we hit all the hot topics. A lot of players that are playing for the Moose right now, we didn't expect to see come back yeah. in Vancouver. Sports Select, Sports Talk, only on Shaw TV Channel 9. presents the Canadian Cancer Society Manitoba Dragon Boat Festival, September 11th to the 13th at the 4th. Registration is underway to race on the red for cancer research. Join us for a jam-packed weekend of fun, entertainment, and racing. To register a team or for more information, contact Facility Marketing Group at 982-1830 or visit cancer.ca. The event sold out last year. Don't miss the boat. Welcome back to Courtside. I'm now joined by David Weens, who's the chair of the Dairy Farmers of Manitoba. David, thanks for joining us. Over 20 years, Milk has been one of the sponsors of the MHSAA Basketball Finals. And to what can we attribute that? Well, first of all, we're very proud. Dairy Farmers of Manitoba is very proud to, to be here as a main sponsor for uh, 22 years now, actually. And really, when it comes right down to it, we think that Milk and Sport make an unbeatable team. And, and uh, this gives us an opportunity to be where the kids are. And uh, we like to promote healthy eating and physical activity in all schools in Manitoba. So this is where it all comes together for us. How are you enjoying the finals tonight? Were you here for the girls' final earlier? Yes, they're just fantastic. It, it was a great comeback, and it's really exciting. Every year we say it's going to be exciting, and every year they don't make liars out of us. It really does. They really do put on a terrific show. I'm, you know what, this is, this is a sports really at its best. Well, David, thanks so much for joining us, and thank you to the Dairy Farmers of Manitoba for continuing their support of the MHSAA. We're back with, uh, well, the second half in the boys' final between Garden City and Sturgeon Heights. Garden City leads and is looking for their second consecutive provincial crowd. We're back in a moment. You're watching Shaw TV Sports. TV Channel 9 is proud to present mobile coverage of the 2009 Milk Provincial 4A High School Basketball Championship Final. Presented by Red River Co-op, the dairy farmers of Manitoba. Never stop. Milk. And the Manitoba High School's Athletic Association. High School Athletics, the other half of education. The Winnipeg Gold Eyes are celebrating 10 great years downtown. For more information, visit our website at goldeyes.com or contact us at 982-BASE. When it comes to local sports, you can watch highlights on the news or you can see the whole game on Shaw TV. Shaw TV Channel 9 is Winnipeg's only live sports channel year-round. From the mainstream to the obscure, you can count on Shaw TV to bring you the best sports coverage in all of Manitoba. No matter what the sport, Shaw TV's championship team covers it all. 
Shot TV Sports. We bring sports in our community to you. There we get a chance to see some of these fans in attendance here for, I believe, that would be the Huskies. Definitely. <laughs> we always see the spirit from both teams here. Faces painted, bodies painted, jerseys on, numbers on, you name it. The band's here, the drums are here, the trumpets are here. It's utter chaos <laughs> for right. the most part. We said at the beginning that it was going to get loud and it was going to get crazy, and it doesn't matter if Sturgeon Heights or Garden City, as That's we can see. Right. That's Brent Wormnest on the drums there, one of the football players and hockey players for Garden City, leading the band there on the opposing side. 57-31 is our score in favor of the Garden City Fighting Gophers, number one team facing the number six, but again, those rankings are out the door. Uh, there was an interview we saw with David Weeb of the Dairy Farmers. There's a number of sponsors that are a big part of all the provincial championships that go on throughout the entire school year. Uh, maybe we could mention some of those right now. We've got the Dairy Farmers, who's a major sponsor for this event. But other partners are Manitoba Telecom Services, Manitoba Credit Union, Winnipeg Free Press, Wilson Sports, Boston Pizza, Shaw Cable, uh, Sport Manitoba, Russell Sports, and along with Home Run Sports, Red River Co-op Subway, and awards and more. So a great group of sponsors, and it couldn't be done without them. Well, they do a remarkable job every year, and when you throw into the mix sport, and sport throw into the mix youth, you know that it's going to be a win-win combination. We thank them for all their sponsorship and hope for their continued sponsorship over the years. They certainly do help add to the experience for these student-athletes. I just wanted to mention some of the other winners at the different levels. At the Junior Varsity Girls level this year, Provincial Championship went to River East Collegiate. Junior Varsity Boys, Sturgeon Heights. Varsity Girls, of course, we just saw Vincent Massey, Winnipeg, and Varsity Boys, of course, this one yet to be determined. Either Garden City repeating as champions or Sturgeon Heights pulling off the upset and winning then, both JV Boys and Varsity Boys. Sturgeon Heights has a look at this game right now. As far as they're concerned, 0-0. they got to come up and start chipping away and do the best they possibly can. And that's exactly what I believe in the post-halftime uh, interview Coach Penner mentioned is treating it the same way. You don't want to get cocky at this point. You've still got a lot of games to play and anything can happen. There's a second half of the basketball game. Absolutely, and we're ready to start that second half. The third quarter about to get started. Huskies to start off with the basketball. And the third quarter is now started. Franz takes a look. Pierce gets it inside to Anders. Anders goes up, in and out, but that ball goes out of bounds off Schmidt. We noticed in the first half a lot of the balls on the one end is getting stuck in the net. That hasn't happened as much tonight, but I'll tell you, last night it was a factor almost every shot, so it's just a newer net and a little bit tight at the bottom. Denise Thought he was going to drive, dishes it out to Algamedi Jackson, who drains the three. A good start for the Fighting Gophers. Good start for Fighting Gophers, as we mentioned before. There just seems to be a lot of weapons in the arsenal. Pierce. Nice spin move by Pierce, and the foul is going to get called against Algamedi Jackson. Great move by Pierce. Jared second foul, Schmidt with the shot, again drops in and out, that ball looked like it went off Anders, but it's called off Milosevic, Husky ball, they get it into Schmidt, Schmidt dishes it off to Pierce, Pierce with the outside shot, again not dropping in, Duff coming up with a huge board for the Gophers, Mike Denisiak looking to drive, he goes straight to the hoop, and is fouled hard by LaFrance. That you never like to see. We'll get a chance at Denisiak going full throttle to the hoop. And LaFrance going in last second takes Denisiak to the floor and a knee to the back. 
The friends might have thought he was back in a football jersey there. Good job by Anisiak taking it right to the hall. 61-31 their score. Denisiak good on the first. Misses the second. Duff coming up with the board. Gets it out to Marco. Marco gets it back to Duff. Duff looking to drive. Dishes it off to Denisiak. Oh, maybe Jackson. 14 seconds. Drains the three. Oh my. Garden City very hot right now. 64-31. LaFrance. Coombs with the ball at the top. He takes a nice shot. But a little bit short. It sounded like a whistle went. Someone blew a whistle. Somebody in the crowd. Might have been someone in the crowd. Good for the officials then to ask them to inbound the ball and give a, a fresh clock there. Fresh clock, inbound the ball. You can clearly hear a whistle. Hopefully that's no one in the crowd. That's something you don't want to see become a factor in this game. Roberto Campanella Jr. back into the game. He can certainly get hot. Roberto Telgamedi Jackson, five seconds. Off balance. He's short. Anders coming down with the ball. Pierce bringing the ball up for Sturgeon Heights. Looking to drive, but we got this foul being called, I think, against Braden Duff. Good job by Pierce as he takes it right down center street. You're going to get a great replay here. Duff's second foul. You can see make contact with the body. And Pierce misses on the second one, but the ball goes off Anders' hands and rates to Duff. Agabebe Jackson looking to dish the ball. LaFrance with the steal. Goes up for an easy two, but it pops out. Those are the ones you definitely want to convert on. Denise Yuck. You can't be missing those when you're down. Gets it into Marco. Roberto Campanella. Agamemi Jackson from downtown. Not much you can do when you shoot it from UW. <laughs> We talked about giving him four for one that he made in the first half. That was definitely a four. Pierce gets the ball stolen by Jared, but it goes out of bounds off Jared. Sturgeon Heights to inbound the ball. There we get a look at Agamemi Jackson's three-point shot. Devin Schmidt with the shot in and out. Ball's just not dropping in right now for Sturgeon Heights. 66-32 is our score in favor of the Gophers. Seven minutes left in the third quarter here. Denise Yuck, back to Roberto Campanella Jr. Doesn't drop in for him. Again, I've seen him get extremely hot from the outside, so... Coombs gets it to Schmidt. Schmidt again, always a danger if left open. LeFrons, solid defense by Garden City. Pierce... Shot doesn't go in, and Anders, oh, I think we should get a charge there. Or even a three-second violation. He leans right into him. Let's take a look Anders. at this one. Oh, it's called on Denisiak. Oh, but you can see the It was the lean called in before there. the lean-in. I think it was. By Anders, otherwise it would have been offensive. Absolutely, but I guess... Could they not hear the whistle? Because they allowed that play to go on for a fairly lengthy time there. 66-33. Anders good on the second one. Some good shooting from the line. 66-34. Agamemi Jackson. Six and a half minutes in the third quarter. Roberto Campanella gets it out to Denisha. Denisha back to Campanella. Gets it into Duff. Denisha with the outside shot. Off the rim. And out. Coombs comes down with it for Sturgeon Heights. Schmidt, Pierce. Nice shot, nice by, shot LeBron. by LeBron. Very athletic. Again, the top running back on the football team led to a provincial championship. Marco. <laughs> Marco with the drive and a lot of contact there, but a no call. Referees letting, letting them play here. Schmidt. 
Another whistle again, you could hear. Maybe Jackson, Roberto Campanella with the drive off Anders and out of bounds. I'm not sure if they can find out where that whistle is coming from, but that's something someone in the crowd should definitely be checking out. Armstrong in the game for Sturgeon Heights. He replaces Anders. Also looking to come into the game soon is Brar. Again, Paul Brar. Milosevic with the basket. 68-37. Five and a half minutes. Pierce looking to drive. And we've got a foul. foul being called, I believe, against Devin Schmidt. That foul's going to go on Schmidt. He was moving. That moving screen. Blocking call. Referee Ozzie Philippin. There we see some of the Garden City fans and Marco inbounding the ball. Doing the infamous GC Watts Chen. 68-37 this is the score. Roberto to Marco. Marco looking to drive. Takes an outside shot. In and out. But we've got a foul being called, I believe, against Tyler Pierce. This would be about his third foul, if I'm not mistaken. Inbounding the ball right now is Braden Duff. Gets it into Marco. Roberto back to Ogamemi Jackson. Good movement here by... by Garden City, but the ball is stolen by Sturgeon Heights. Brar again, always the threat when he's on the court. That ball almost stolen by Garden City. Pierce moving the ball to LaFrance. LaFrance, you don't want to leave him open. That's two times in a row. They've got to come out on him. They can't leave him alone. Agamemi Jackson gets it into Duff. Roberto Campanella. And he drains a three. Campanella has to play some defense. 71-40 is our score. Four and a half minutes left. Pierce looking to drive. Dishes it off to Brar again. Don't leave Brar open, but that one off the rim. Agamemi Jackson looking to get some contact there. Roberto Campanella again. Oh, just a little bit short there. I thought that one was going to drop in. Woo! Almost a ball thrown away by Pierce. Campanella comes with it. Agamemi Jackson looking to slow things down a little bit for the Fighting Gophers. Set things up. Seven gets it into Duff. Duff spin move goes up. Doesn't drop in. Pierce coming down with the big board for the Huskies. Good ball movement by Garden City. LaFrance. Nice drive by LaFrance. That's Keenan LaFrance showing again his athleticism. Got the feeling that Coach Penner is a little bit unhappy with Campanella Jr. And Denisiak with the outside three. Just when Sturgeon Heights starts making a bit of a comeback, the Gophers pop in another three. Tyler Pierce looking to drive. He's going to go to the line. That's going to be against stuff. This foul being called against Braden Duff again with the body. <laughs> See that foul being called against Duff. Into the game, Brendan Corrigan at the line right now. Tyler Pierce, good on the first one, shooting quite well tonight from the line. We saw both teams struggling a little bit last night from the line. And Tyler Pierce good on the second one. Sturge Knight needs a few stops here with three minutes left in the third quarter. Denisiak with the ball gets it to Corrigan. Corrigan to Duff. Duff with the outside shot. It's short, but coming up with it is Agamemi Jackson. He goes up. A little bit of contact made, but no call. Agamemi Jackson decides to bring it out, running the clock down. He goes outside again. It's short. Looking for some contact. Nothing called. Good job by the front there. Yeah. 
Anna LaFrance very hot for the Huskies right now. Devin Schmidt with the outside shot. It's short. Denisiak's just going to let that ball go out of bounds. 224 left. 74 44. 30 point lead in favor of the Gophers. Agamemi Jackson slowing things down. Marco Milosevic drains the three. Excellent shooting by Garden City. Tyler Pierce gets it inside to Anders. Anders. That foul called against Brendan Corrigan. That's Holding. his third foul. We've got a number of players that are potentially getting themselves into some foul trouble Apple. here. At the line right now is LeFrance. He's good on the first one. We get a good look at Keenan LeFrance. Good on the second one. Johnson for Barr. Back into the game is number 13, Connor Johnson. He replaces Brar. Denise Schecht with the ball gets to Corrigan. Corrigan with the outside shot. It's short. Anders coming down with it. Devin Schmidt makes a nice move, but it doesn't drop in. But out of bounds. Called against the Huskies. He came down with the board, but stepped out of bounds. 145 left in the third quarter. Here we get a look at Devin Schmidt with a nice move, but doesn't convert. And that ball going out of bounds. Schmidt. Corrigan gets it into Marco. Inside to Jared Ogabedi Jackson. Ball great, by that Gophers. great pass by Marco. 79-46, a minute and a half in the third quarter. Pierce to Schmidt. Schmidt looking to drive. And nice drive with some. Heat on him for sure defensively. And that ball almost stolen by LeBron's gets it into Corrigan. Corrigan makes no mistake on that one. 81-48. LeBron Schmidt. And we've got a technical being called. Against, I believe it's Tyler Pierce. And some of the Sturgeon Heights fans throwing bottles on the floor. Not a good thing to do. That's something you definitely never want to see in any game. But Coach Shep stood up immediately to talk to his... Oh, maybe Jackson converts on the first one. Garden City's going to get the ball off this. And good on the second one. Fifty-one seconds left in the third quarter. Oh, Benny Jackson with the ball. LaFrance on him. Looking to drive. He goes up and is mauled. He's going to go against Sanders, I think. It's Anders' second foul. Algamebi Jackson at the line right now. 43 seconds, 83 48 is our score. Number one player in the province misses on the first one. Jared being a member of the varsity boys team since grade nine. Something you don't see too often, but we saw it in the girls' game with Tia Coulter. Oh, and this is on the second one, but Marco coming down with the ball gets it to maybe Jackson. Gets the ball to Mike Denisiak, misses the three point attempt. 30 seconds left, Tyler Pierce with the ball for Sturgeon Heights. 
LaFrance with the attempt. How could maybe Jackson? Double for one. 17 seconds left, Agamemi Jackson with the ball right now. He'll run the clock down going for last shot here. 10 seconds, 83-48's our score. Denise with the three-point attempt, and he drains it! Three quarter time, almost a 40-point lead by the Gophers. Take a look at that last Shot there, Agamemi Jackson with the crossover, Denisiak, an unorthodox shooter, but it goes in. Textbook, you get to see some of the Gophers fans, they're going crazy, they're only one quarter away from defending that championship. Our score, 86-48, in favor of the Garden City Fighting Gophers, number one team in the province, held on to that ranking majority of the season. And of course, Sturgeon Heights number six, but they've been in the top four most of the season, lost their rankings very late. They've pulled off many upsets this year. There's still a quarter to play here. With one quarter left to play, Coach Shep is telling his kids right now, we're going to win the quarter. Forget about the game, the game is over. Let's win the quarter. At Shaw TV, we're all about community sports and we value your comments. Call the Shaw TV viewer response line now at 480-3500 and tell us how we're doing. You can also email us at shawtvwinnipeg at shaw.ca. I'd like to welcome all our viewers that are tuning in to the provincial finals here. We saw Vincent Massey win the girls over Crocus Plains by two points. And right now we're seeing Garden City taking on Sturgeon Heights. LaFrance converting for Sturgeon Heights. 88-50 is our score. Good job by Sturgeon Heights. They're still out there playing hard. Braden Duff gets the ball to Ogumbebe Jackson. Ogumbebe Jackson out to Marco Milosevic. He is short on the three-point attempt. Tyler Pierce coming down with the ball, bringing the ball up the floor. Good ball moving out the offensive end by the uh, Gophers again. Sorry, Denisiak with that last attempt. Good job by LaFrance taking it to the hole. This foul being called against Jared Ogabebe Jackson. That's his third foul. So to the line right now is Keenan LaFrance, who's been very hot for Sturgeon Heights. He's good on the first one. And good on the second one. Our viewers once again being treated to some outstanding provincial championships here. We'd like to welcome all the viewers, including those that are watching the game in Brandon with the Westman area. Marco Milosevic gets it into Duff. Duff goes up, puts it in for two. Good pass in by side, inside by Marco. 90-52 is our score. Pierce looking to drive. He's all alone, doesn't drop in, but right there is Anders. Nice board and shot and by Anders. Anders cleans up on the offensive glass. Eight and a half. Hugga maybe Jackson driving, spins it up and puts it in. Good crossover by Jackson, sets that whole thing up. And this ball out of bounds off Pierce. Go for ball, Agamemi Jackson. Gets it into Marco. Marco goes up strong and drops it in, even though there's some contact there. Looks like he took a shot to the eye. 
Sujin Height still playing very physical. Pierce looking to drive. Big block by Ogabemi Jackson. But we've got a foul being called, I think, against Mike Denisiak. Big block by Ogamemi Jackson. And then the foul being called against Denisha. 94-54. That's going to go on LaFrance. That foul being called against LaFrance. Going after the ball. Brendan trying to pull in that pass, but he gets hit from behind. Seven and a half minutes left in this championship game. 94-54, 40 points lead for the Fighting Gophers. Marco gets the ball into Duff. Duff looking to drive. Spin move goes up. Gets fouled on the play. He'll go to the line shooting two. This foul going against Devin Schmidt. Schmidt or Anders, it didn't matter. They both got him. <laughs> Shaquille Armstrong back into the game. He replaces Anders. Duff good on the first attempt at the line. And good on the second one. Pierce with the ball. Gets it inside to Armstrong. Armstrong back to Pierce. That ball tipped by Ogabemi Jackson, but Schmidt still comes up with it. Milosevic playing some good defense. Denise yet coming down with the ball for the Gophers. Ogabemi Jackson looking to set things up, gets it into Duff. Duff Ooh. gets the ball stolen by Armstrong. Pierce with the ball, and that ball knocked almost out of bounds. And Mike Denise thinking he's a soccer player. We'll let him know that the tryouts are in about a month. Good hustle by the Gophers. And actually our soccer coaches are in attendance here, so we'll see if they like that move. Oh, and a big block oh. by Brendan Corrigan. Looks like that was all ball, but that is called again. That'll be, I believe, his fourth foul. I think he still likes that block. Back into the game is Roberto Campanella Jr. again. All ball on that one. What do you think, Lori? You can correct me if I'm wrong. It was interesting, <laughs> but I think with Brayden, he went forward and his lower body was made contact. LaFron, good from the line. 96-56, 6.45 left in this boys' championship game, Garden City, Sturgeon Heights. Six minutes away to declare the boys' champ championships. Roberto Campanella Jr. in and out. Duff coming, almost coming up with it. Looked like Armstrong grabbed his jersey. LaFrance again doesn't go in. Marco Milosevic coming down with it. He dishes it off to Denisia, who gives it out to Roberto. Back to Milosevic. And to Denisia, who doesn't convert on the easy basket. One pass too many for the Gophers. Ogamebi Jackson almost with the steal. Pierce hangs on to it. Gets it to Armstrong. Armstrong looking to drive. He puts it up. Ogamemi Jackson comes down with it. And Armstrong pretty much spikes it out of his hands. Called on the foul. There we get a chance to see this replay. And right across his face. But I'll tell you one thing you don't want to see right now is an injury. No. You know, so that's where uh, Surgeon Heights has to maintain their composure. Because you definitely don't want to see that. Into the game right now is... Alex Hebert is in for uh, number 22, Dylan Forsberg. Number 12, Alex Hebert. Marco Milosevic looking to drive. Elias Jersey also into the game now for the Fighting Gophers, one of the great 12 players. They get it out to Jersey, can't hang on to that ball. So we a couple of others in the game here now. Izzy Hussein into the game. He replaces Marco Milosevic. 
Coach Penner giving his bench an opportunity to get on the floor. Still five and a half minutes, lots of time left. Armstrong with the ball. Gets it out to Pierce. Pierce looking to drive. And he is out of bounds. Good defense by the Gophers. <laughs> Elias Dersey inbounds the ball to Agamemi Jackson. 96-56, still our score. 40 points in favor of the Gophers. Duff with the ball. Gets it back to Agamemi Jackson. To Dersey. Dersey with the outside shot. And the three! The three. That brings the bench off to their feet Schmidt with the ball Pierce Pierce looking to drive that ball goes out of bounds off I thought it went off Duff but they're calling it off Armstrong I don't think he got to Armstrong Braden Duff comes out of the game not texting into the game another grade 12 some of these players didn't even play last year and they're now members of this team only two of the Starters back from last year's championship team. Garden City looking to defend their title. Ogabebe Jackson missing that one, but nice save there by Hebert getting the ball to Pierce. They get it into LaFrance, showing his athleticism there, but he steps out of bounds. Solid defense by Campanella Jr. Four minutes, 42 seconds left in the boys' championship game. 99-56 is our score. Agamemi Jackson bringing the ball up the floor for the Fighting Gophers. Roberto Campanella Jr. looking to drive. He goes to the hoop and drains the basket for the Fighting Gophers. Good job by Campanella Jr. Schmidt from the outside again. Dangerous from there. Scramble underneath the basket. Nice play there by Hebert, gets it to LaFrance, he's short on that one, but Schmidt in perfect position to get that rebound and put it up for an easy two. Agamemi Jackson, four minutes left in the boys' final here at the Investors Group Athletic Center at the University of Manitoba. Hussein from the outside, and he drains it for three! Two for two. Oh, and there we get a foul called against Elias Dersey with the reach in. 104 to 58 is our score. Mark Garcia coming into the game. He's going to replace the number one player in the province, Jared Agambevi Jackson. Been a member of the team since grade nine, and the crowd standing up applauding him leaving the court, playing his last game for Garden City. Schmidt with the shot, comes down with the old, his own board, but a foul being called. I'm not sure who this is against. I believe against Izzy Hussein. It's going to go against Izzy. Devin Schmidt, good on the first shot. Nice shooting by Schmidt. Three minutes, 42 seconds left. Schmidt at the line. This is the second one, but coming up with it is Mark Garcia. Elias Jersey with the ball for the Gophers. Gets it into Texan. Roberto Campanella Jr. gets it to Garcia. Garcia to Dersey. Dersey looking to drive. Gets the ball stolen by LaFrance, but it ends up in Mark Garcia's hands. And he drinks the last second ditch effort. Everyone on the Gopher team putting some points on the score sheet in this championship game. Tyler There's Pierce. Three for three from Beyond the Stripe. Three minutes. Schmidt from the outside. And he drains it for three. Garcia bringing the ball up the floor. 107 62 is our score. Less than three minutes. Nice pass by Garcia to Dersey. Texan. Texan back to Dersey. 10 seconds on the board. Is he Usain? Board. Nice board. And Texan a little bit short. Coming up with that is Hebert. And Pierce keeping that ball alive. Schmidt with the ball. He takes the three pointer. And drains it 
Coming back into the game, Brendan Corrigan looking for a substitution. 107 65, 220. Elias Solomon Jersey. Campanella looking to drive. The ball stolen, stripped from him. That's Lambert. Here comes Fierce. Pierce doesn't convert, but Lambert right there and puts it up for two. Two minutes left. Jersey gets the ball stolen by Pierce. Pierce misses. Jersey gets it again, but is now fouled by Pierce. That's going to be his fifth. Pierce taking that turnaround, coming down with it, and then you can see the foul against Pierce. Good hustle by Pierce. Campanella Jr. coming out of the game. And into the game is Coombs. He replaces Tyler Pierce, who had a great game for Sturgeon Heights. One of the great 12 players. Mark Garcia bringing the ball up. Minute 49, Izzy Hussein to Matt Texan. They get it into Corrigan. Corrigan with the baseline jumper rolls out. That's a, usually a clutch shot for him. LaFrance, three point attempt. In and out, he got robbed there. But in perfect position with 21 Lambert. Gets the board but doesn't convert. Mark Garcia, less than a minute and a half. Garcia looking to. I thought he was going to drive this dish it off to Hussein, but it's stolen by Lambert. LaFrance with the outside shot again, in and out, but in perfect position was Lambert, doesn't convert. But making no mistake, there is Hebert. Good rebounding by the Huskies. Well, Last finished. minute. They'll play right to the bitter end. Corrigan with the ball. Gets it into Hussein. Hussein looking to try, doesn't go in. Schmidt came, I'm sorry, it wasn't Schmidt, I believe it was Lambert that came over. Coombs. Two point attempt. Oh, sorry, they called it a three. Three point. 107 72. Garden City hasn't scored in a while. 35 seconds. Garcia with the ball. Gets it to Texan. Texan to Hussein. Hussein looking to drive. That's ball goes out of bounds off Hebert, who's all over him. Back into the game for Sturgeon Heights, number 13, Connor Johnson. And of course, Dan Paul Brar. He replaces Devin Schmidt, Schmidt. and LaFrance. Again, some of the great 12s coming off the floor. Mark Garcia gets the ball, gets it to Elias. Three, three seconds on the shot clock. That shot misses, but Elias Dursey almost stealing that ball from Hebert. Coombs, 14 seconds. Brar, Brar with the three-point attempt. Oh, nice roll by Brar. Garcia, seven seconds. Just going to let it run out. Garden City defending champion. He's going to get across here. And Garden City repeats as defending champions. By a score of 107 to 75. One of the higher scoring games I think we've seen. Good job by Garden City. They moved the ball around. It was only a matter of time. Surgeon Heights mixed up the game. They tried to stop Garden City, but just too much of a juggernaut. You see a lot of the fans on the floor that have been at a lot of the games throughout the season supporting the Gophers on their quest for a provincial championship, defending their title, 107-75. Garden City just really shooting the lights out tonight. Well, there's just too many things. As we mentioned earlier in the first half, just too many weapons in the arsenal. Uh, Surgeon Creek tried to answer the bell, and uh, Coach Shep changed many things up. And uh, just, just too much, too much to handle. You can't plug all of the holes. And uh, hats off to Garden City and to Coach Penner. Excellent job. We see a lot of the fans are going to have to get the teams to line up right away. The hardware's on the court already. 
And again, unfortunately, some of the Sturgeon Heights fans not too happy in throwing stuff on the floor. Going to have to get the Garden City supporters off the floor in order to get this closing ceremonies going. Notice last night we had uh, Assistant Superintendent Dwayne Brothers from the Seven Oaks School Division in attendance. I believe he's here tonight as well. And I also saw the Superintendent Brian O'Leary in attendance here. So nice to see the uh, Seven Oaks School Division in attendance here to support the Fighting Gophers as well. We're just going to take a short break and we'll be right back with the presentation of all the hardware. TV Channel 9 is proud to present mobile coverage of the 2009 Milk Provincial 4A High School Basketball Championship Final. Presented by Red River Co-op, the dairy farmers of Manitoba. Never stop. Milk. And the Manitoba High School's Athletic Association. High School Athletics, the other half of education. At Shaw TV, we're all about community sports and we value your comments. Call the Shaw TV viewer response line now at 480-3500 and tell us how we're doing. You can also email us at shawtvwinnipeg at shaw.ca. of the 2009 Milk 4A High School Basketball Championship Awards. We would like to congratulate both teams for an exciting performance. We would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge our corporate partners. The Dairy Farmers of Manitoba are the major sponsors for this event. Other partners include MTS, Manitoba's Credit Unions, Winnipeg Free Press, Wilson Sports, Boston Pizza, Shaw Cable, Sport Manitoba, Russell Sports along with Home Run Sports, Red River Co-op, Subway, and Awards and more. We would like to welcome our award presenters, the Honorable Peter Bjornsson, the Minister of Education, David Weens, Chairman of the Board for the Dairy Farmers of Manitoba. Nancy Baker, member of the Board of Directors of the Manitoba High School's Athletic Association. And Eliza Pangan from the Players' Choice Award Committee. The Manitoba High School's Athletic Association would like to acknowledge this year's High School Championship All-Star Team. Before the All-Star Selections, we would like to take this opportunity to recognize the Dairy Farmers of Manitoba Players' Choice Award as selected by the athletes participating in this year's Final Four. This year's Players' Choice Award goes to, from the Garden City Fighting Gophers, number 27, Braden Duff. And now for the naming of the boys' all-star team. This year's all-stars will receive a Manitoba High School's Athletic Association certificate and Russell Athletic t-shirt from Home Run Sports. And they are, from the St. Paul's Crusaders, Pavel Gatsoin. From the Oak Park Raiders, Rob Schellenberg. Here comes Mr. Gatsoin. From the Garden City Fighting Gophers, Braden Duff. Also from the Garden City Fighting Gophers, Marco Milosevic. And 
from the Sturgeon Heights Huskies, Tyler Pierce. The 2009 Milk 4A High School Basketball Championships Most Valuable Player will receive an MHSAA certificate, MTS backpack, and Russell Athletic hoodie. This year's Most Valuable Player for a second consecutive season, number 32, Jared Ogumbemi Jackson! Jared scored 34 points in today's final. And now, if I could please ask the captains of the Sturgeon Heights Huskies to come up and accept their finalist banner. Once again, if I could get the captains from the Sturgeon Heights Huskies to come forward and accept their finalist banner. <laughs> Members of the team include Tyler Pierce, Anthony Coombs, Keenan LaFrance, Alex Hebert, Connor Johnson, Dompar Brar, Tanner Lambert, Dylan Forsberg, Wyatt Anders, Devin Schmidt, and Shaquille Armstrong. <laughs> Coaches are Kirby Shep and Ian Hayes. The manager is Nathan Jansen. Congratulations to the number six seeded Sturgeon Heights Huskies on reaching the championship final. And now we would like to ask the captains of the Garden City Fighting Gophers to come up and accept their championship banner and championship trophy. And now we would also ask the following players to come up and accept their championship t-shirts courtesy of the Dairy Farmers of Manitoba and the championship medallions courtesy of Manitoba's credit unions. Number four, Mark Garcia. Number 11, Brendan Corrigan. Number 15, Mike Denisiuk. Number 16, Marco Milosevic. Number 22, Matt Texan. Number 24, Roberto Campanella Jr. Number 27, Braden Duff. Number 31, Elias Dersey. Number 32, Jared Ogunbemi Jackson. 
And number 38, Izzy Hussein. Coach Phil Penner. Coach Chester Wojcikowski. Coach Mike Peterson. Coach Sidney Ogunbemi Jackson. And Coach Kadeem Coleman. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your 4A Provincial Boys Basketball Champions for 2009, the Garden City Fighting Gophers! the awards presentation, the banners going to both schools, and of course the medals. I uh, just want to make a, one comment to the Player's Choice Award, Braden Duff, uh, and I, I feel this way about all the guys, but I'll tell you, in 22 years of teaching, I have never met a student that is more respectful, and, and the manners that he shows, he's got to be one of the best that I've ever seen come through the school in all my years of teaching. So I, very nice to see him get well, that Well, Kerry mentioned it earlier, Missy. He talks about uh, the other half of education. Just the character in terms of the characteristics and whatnot that some of these athletes pick up, and that's what it's all about. There's more than just the wins and losses to determine your success. And Braden Duff happens to be a living, breathing example of that. Absolutely. Very respectful, uh, as all these guys are. Uh, just a great team, like last year. Guys that worked very, very hard. They put in a lot of time. And uh, it's nice to see good guys win again, you know? Not that Sturgeon Heights isn't. I'm not, not at all trying to uh, say that. They played their hearts out and earned every right to be in this championship game here. Uh, but that was Garden City just proving that they're very strong and uh, shooting the lights out tonight. At this point, we're going to go to uh, courtside where Chuck is waiting with an interview with Coach Kirby Shep. Thank you very much, uh, Missy. Yes, we're joined by Kirby Shep. Coach, uh, we were just talking about it. It seemed like your team did a lot of things tonight that proved why they belonged in the provincial final, but just came up a little bit short. Your thoughts on the game? Well, I mean, there are a few things we did okay. At times, we couldn't get sustained efforts of it. I mean, if we showed that, then they showed why they're one of the best teams in a long time. Back-to-back -back champions, I mean, we back-to-back -back player of the year, probably back-to-back -back coach of the year. They're, they're truly an outstanding team that not only are great, but played great. Talk to me, this is a chance for you to talk about your guys, your team. Despite the loss tonight, you've got to be really proud of them. Talk to us about the team from Sturgeon Heights. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, we were sort of up and down most of the year. And, uh, I mean, any coach wants a team to play well at the end of the year, which I think we did. I think we rattled off. 10 of the 12 to sort of finish it up. We made a really nice run. I don't think anybody would have put us in this game. Uh, I'm really proud of my guys. I'm really proud of how they competed. We just ran into a great team tonight. And we should highlight again, you guys came in as the sixth seed, knocked off teams that were higher ranked than you guys to face off against what you say is one of the best teams we've seen in a long time. Yeah. So hats off to your guys. Uh, well, what happens next in the Sturgeon Heights program? You've got some young players still coming up the ranks. Uh, well, absolutely. Well, what happens next right now is i got to be with those guys. I mean, i got guys who end their career right now, and it's a very emotional time for them and for me. So I don't look beyond that right now. My job is not done yet. Our season isn't quite over yet. But you're right. I mean, uh, our JV team won the Venture Championship this year. We have a number of young players coming up, and uh, we don't rebuild at Sturgeon Heights. We reload. Well, good luck reloading. We look forward to seeing you guys next Thank year. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Coach Kirby Shep from Sterling Heights. We've got the coach, Phil Penner. He's right with us. Stand by. Coach Phil Penner, congratulations. Welcome to courtside. Jared Ogunbemi Jackson, two-time MVP, two-time provincial 4A champions. 
if this kind of feels like deja vu, it's because it is. A year ago at this very moment, in a different gymnasium in this city, we were celebrating your provincial crown. Uh, how did you do it, Coach? Let's start with that. Uh, you know what? Uh, we just shot the lights out. Uh, honestly, uh, I thought we played pretty good defense during the game, uh, especially in the first half. But offensively, I mean... I mean, I like. I don't know what our stats were, but uh, put it this way, we shot really, really well. Jared, 34 points tonight. You helped your team pull away. What did you do so special tonight that helped you guys do it? I thought I was just focused coming into the game. Coming into the game, I wanted to execute and do everything properly. I wanted to play good defense. I told the team to win this game, we have to play defense, and we did that. And like my coach said, we shot the lights so I'm not even going to lie. Coach, we were just talking to Coach Shep from the Huskies a moment ago, and I said to him, many of us noticed they didn't play that badly. You guys just seemed to play that much better. And you came out right from the beginning firing on all cylinders. Was that the plan? Well, it's always the plan, but you, rarely can you execute it like that. Um, you know what? We've kind of been playing really, really well lately. Our KPAC championship, we shot unbelievable. And then even through the three provincial games, uh, we seem to carry that on. I wish I could bottle that because I could make about a million dollars. But uh, I don't know what it is, but our right, guys, a big part of it is right here. And, you know, Braden and Marco, like just our leadership, guys have kind of been there before. I think that sort of helped us a little bit, calm our nerves. I thought last night in the first five minutes of the first quarter, we were a little jittery. And then we settled down and played, and I thought tonight we were a little bit more relaxed and, as Jared said, kind of more focused. And uh, like I say, I, I wish I could bottle that because uh, I could make a lot of money. Jared, what's it like winning for the second time as it compares with last year? It feels great. I mean, I worked hard all summer. The team worked hard all year, every day in practice. We have guys coming in, working hard every single day, and that's what it gets. You know, that's what it takes to be successful, and I think that's what we did. And, and Coach Shep paid you guys the ultimate compliment when he was with me a few moments ago. He said, this is one of the best high school teams we've seen in a long time in Manitoba. And this young man is probably one of the finest players we've seen in a very long time in Manitoba. I guess the question is, what happens next? Please tell us you're going to be staying involved in basketball in the years ahead. I hope so. I'll, I'll, hopefully I'll be playing at the next level. But I'm going to celebrate this victory right now. And after that, I'll hopefully get a better idea of what I'm going to do. You've got him well trained in dealing with the media, yeah, Coach. Right there. <laughs> Congratulations, Coach Penner. Right, Jared Ogabemi Jackson, the MVP. Thank you so much. All right. We're going to bring in Missy and Coach May. They're giving hugs to the champions there from Garden City. As you know, uh, Missy, or you may not know, Missy, of course, is a teacher at Garden City, and her husband is Phil Penner. She comes by that name well. Uh, guys, uh, we're not just talking about the boys' final here. We can wrap up the whole evening, the girls' final, Vincent Massey, our champions. But we'll start with the boys. A terrific game, a lot of athleticism out there, but it just goes to show how strong Garden City's basketball program is. Coach? Well, there's no doubt about it. I mean, the defending champs, I mean, as I talked with uh, Coach Shep earlier, you can only plug so many holes. I mean, you're looking at a team that has so many weapons in their arsenal, you can't stop it. And in terms of, we mentioned a couple times this evening, you got a view of the other half of education. That's what it's all about. Missy, coming from Garden City, you must be thrilled, but also just generally as, a, as someone who's involved in sport for a long time, it must be nice to see a team like this come through two years in a row. It, it really is. I can't say enough about the guys. I mean, they are just a class act. They are extremely polite, well-mannered, very respectful guys, and they work their butts off. And, I mean, there's not a team that puts in more time than them. I, they're just extremely dedicated. Uh, they're working hard all season, and they had to really, you know, gel together as a team. They didn't have a lot of starters back from last year, and, uh, you know, just proves that hard work pays off. You know? And history didn't repeat itself tonight. We, in the girls' final, we also had a chance at a repeat for Crocus Plains. They came up short. Vincent Massey, the Trojans from Vincent Massey, Winnipeg, are the champions. Laurie, some uh, thoughts, final thoughts from you on the State of the Union, if you will, on uh, the girls' side of things. Well, on the girls' side of things, I was, Missy and I were talking about it earlier. Just the fact that we saw Vincent Massey's team that was aggressive. They were aggressive at both ends of the floor, and that was the one that wanted for them. A great comeback by Crocus Plains. Unfortunately, they just ran out of time. Missy, some final thoughts on the girls' final. Oh, I, you know, I thought it was unreal that 
Crocus came back, it was looking like Vincent Massey was going to kind of walk away with that one. So, I mean, that, that shows a lot of heart and composure. Uh, good that Vincent Massey pulled that one off because I'm sure they wouldn't have uh, enjoyed losing that one. But, I mean, that's what you want to see in the championship finals. Both teams fighting it out and it going down to the wire. Well, there you go. They're literally turning the lights off on us here at the University of Manitoba tonight. So we are going to have to wrap things up. To recap, though, your champions on the girls' side are the Vincent Massey Trojans from Winnipeg. And on the boys' side, as you just saw it, the Garden City Fighting Gophers are your repeat champions for 2009. For Coach Lori May, for Missy Penner, and our entire Shaw TV Sports team here at the University of Manitoba, I'm Chuck Clement. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.